Ellen, were you surprised by the allegations about P. Diddy? Did that surprise you about P. Diddy? He's been on your show many times. Dear Ellen, happy birthday to you. You didn't invite me to the party, so I'm just here in my office having shots in honor of one of the most beautiful women in the world. So tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up. You know, it was just a matter of time before Ellen DeGeneres, the queen of mean, got caught up in this whole Diddy mess. The other day, the paparazzi caught Ellen and asked her what she thinks about her old buddy Diddy dealing with some heavy accusations. And let me tell you, Ellen was sweating bullets when those reporters mentioned those wild Diddy parties. Over the years, Diddy was always popping up on The Ellen Show. But now, with all the buzz about his wild parties making headlines, Fans are going back to watch some of his old interviews. There's even a moment where Diddy teasingly corners Ellen with a question, wondering why she keeps saying no to his party invites. Word on the street is, Ellen might have actually showed up at a few of Diddy's shindigs. It's not like those flashy, celeb-packed bashes we usually think of with Diddy. Instead, some folks are saying Ellen might have been hitting up other events. So, here's the scoop. There are whispers about Ellen attending smaller, quieter get-togethers at Diddy's place where some sketchy and possibly unlawful stuff supposedly happened. And guess what? There's this unsettling video making the rounds on social media showing Ellen making Justin Bieber squirm and asking him some not-so-cool questions. Now, with rumors swirling that Justin might have been a target of Diddy and other big shots in the industry, Fans are starting to wonder if Ellen had any clue about what went down with Justin. You just brought a friend to Bora Bora? Yeah. And you're just naked with your friend? Why are you putting me on the spot like this? Gosh. I mean, you can say, why can't you say you're dating somebody? I'm not dating anyone, though. She's just a friend? She's just a friend. Wow. <laughs> I have friends, I've never seen them naked like that. And they don't bring me to Bora Bora. Stop, you're making me blush, dude. All right, let's get real about Ellen and Diddy's friendship. Did Ellen really show up at those rumored freak-off parties? And could she end up tangled in the ongoing federal investigation into Diddy? Now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really, that early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I could think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party. Though. Let's dig into it. So first off, Let's chat about why folks are saying Ellen DeGeneres and Diddy might be tighter than we think. Ellen hasn't been hit with serious criminal stuff like Diddy has, but folks sure do talk about her being the toughest cookie in Hollywood. And let me tell you, some of the stuff people say about Ellen will give you goosebumps. Here's the deal. Both Diddy and Ellen, they've got this public image that's quite different from who they really are. It looks like the facade they've been putting up is starting to crumble, showing a bit of their real selves. Ellen actually began her career in the 80s doing stand-up comedy at small places like coffee houses in New Orleans. She got popular fast and started touring all over the country. Ellen's first major TV break came with a sitcom called Open House, but it didn't stick around for too long. However, the producers saw her talent and gave her another shot with a show called These Friends of Mine, which was later renamed Ellen. But the real turning point came in April 1997, when Ellen publicly came out on The Oprah Winfrey Show, making big waves. In her sitcom, Ellen's character also came out in the iconic The Puppy episode, which was a landmark moment in TV history for its handling of LGBTQ plus issues. After her sitcom ended, Ellen went back to stand-up comedy before making a comeback with a new sitcom, The Ellen Show, in 2001. This was followed by her hugely successful daytime talk show, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Now here's where things got interesting. Despite being known as the friendly, goofy talk show host who loves to dance and give away prizes, cracks started to appear in Ellen's image. In 2007, a former writer from her sitcom spoke out about how she mistreated the writing staff, criticizing their work behind closed doors while putting on a charming front during rehearsals. You know, people kept talking over the years, but Ellen somehow always stayed in the clear. That is, until 2016 when Kathy Griffin spilled the beans in her memoir about an encounter with a certain popular daytime talk show host with short blonde hair. Griffin later confirmed she was talking about Ellen, showing a side of her that wasn't all sunshine and rainbows after all. There's so few 
female comics over 50 that are making a living or doing okay, like, we need to support each other. I expressed that to her, and she was like, I don't have to have anybody on my show I don't like and I don't want. I said, I know. What did she What did she say? She just really was on a rant. Because I had mentioned on your show that, you know, I wish that women would support each other more, in particular, super, super influential women. Clips of Ellen being rude and making celebs uncomfortable started popping up all over social media. Let's talk about the one and only Wendy Williams. You know, she's had some pretty big beefs, especially with Diddy and Ellen. Word on the street is that Diddy got Wendy booted from her radio gig back in the 90s after she hinted he might be on the down low. And when it comes to Ellen, she never really hid her dislike for Wendy, being all passive aggressive and such. It was pretty obvious, even when Wendy was on Ellen's show as a guest. Right, let's talk about uh, the show. You got renewed for three more years. Congratulations. Thank for, you. Uh, Thank you. I'm grateful. Yeah. I mean, you're an OG in this game. You know what it is. Yeah, it's you know, it's really amazing. I mean, as we know, talk shows come and go. To be able to stay on the air, it's a, it's a big deal. Yeah. Well, um, um, in 2020, we will be 11 years old. Yeah. Right? Just. And there's no rhyme or reason to to say that a show is going to last just because you get one season. So mm -hmm. I'm very grateful. Yeah. Oh. Some people say that he looks like you. I've heard that. You've never heard that? They say it in a good way. Who? Uh, he, uh, his, his, okay. What's fine. the song? What's the song? Baby, baby. Oh. I, I, forgot, I forgot the name of the new one. That's not new. No, no. Yeah. What, yeah. What's his new song called? I yeah. forget. I know all the words. Yeah. So, Sorry. Do I look like Justin Bieber? No, they have made the equation. Oh, well. That's I, in a good way. I don't mind that. He's cute. He's adorable. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to that cringe-worthy interview Ellen had with Mariah Carey back in 2008. It's a perfect example of how Ellen would do anything to get attention for her show. People were talking quietly about Mariah maybe being pregnant, but she hadn't said anything official yet. Even though Mariah seemed uneasy talking about it, Ellen kept pushing her to spill the beans. She even tried to get Mariah to drink champagne on the show to show she wasn't expecting. That, uh, that you're pregnant. There, there's rumors. Don't discuss that. Um, <laughs> all right, well, you don't have to answer. No, that's okay. No, no honestly, you don't have to answer. Me. Let's just toast with champagne and decide. You want to taste it? I can't believe you did this to me, Ellen. What? <laughs> no, are you I'm, trying I'm to not going to ask you if you're pregnant this or not. This is I'm peer just pressure. Say. You see what Ellen is doing? This is peer pressure. No. Let's toast to you not being pregnant. If you're not pregnant, then oh, we should. Oh, my goodness. Back in 2020, Mariah opened up about that notorious incident during her chat with Vulture. She admitted feeling super awkward and struggling with the fallout. I wasn't ready to tell anyone because I'd had a miscarriage, Mariah explained, also pointing out that she hoped Ellen would have been more understanding. Remember when Dakota Johnson totally called out Ellen? It was epic! You know how Ellen sometimes stretches the truth for laughs and most stars just play along? Well, Dakota isn't one to go with the flow. So, when she popped by The Ellen Show in December 2019 and started talking about her 30th birthday bash, Ellen tried to rib her about not scoring an invite. Instead of going with the flow, Dakota basically called Ellen out for fibbing about not scoring an invite. I wasn't invited. Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Last year, no, last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be invited. Well, who doesn't want to be invited to a party? Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> of course I like you. You knew I liked you. You've been on the show many times, and, and don't I show like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I did invite you, and you didn't come, so. This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Ellen was visibly uncomfortable, squirming in her seat, trying to change the subject, but Dakota wasn't backing down. She straight up brought the evidence, saying everyone on Ellen's team knew about the invite. To make matters worse, Dakota didn't hold back on saying she prefers another comedian over Ellen. So This time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? I don't think so. Ask everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Jonathan, your producer. Who okay. said you were? I yeah, was invited? Why didn't I go? I don't know. Was it, was it? it Oh yeah, I had that thing. Um, <laughs> it was probably in Malibu. That's too far for me to go to. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. No, I think I do remember I was invited. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, no, but I, I really didn't remember that until just now. Um, and then, but Tig Notaro performed at your party. She did. She did a set. She did. It was a surprise. What did she do? 
a bunch of funny stuff. She's hilarious. <laughs> She's my favorite comedian. Yeah. Other than you. <laughs> Ouch. It's like a classic case of how narcissists hate being called out. And speaking of which, Diddy had a similar moment on the Jimmy Kimmel show not too long ago. It was like deja vu from what happened between Dakota and Ellen. You could almost see their true colors shining through in both situations. Just weeks before Cassie filed her lawsuit last November, Diddy showed up on Jimmy Kimmel Live. When Jimmy mentioned Diddy's ex-bodyguard, Gene Deal, and all the crazy stuff he said about him, you could practically see Diddy's facade cracking. I am love. Hey, speaking of this love, is love. I saw a guy on the internet the other day who said he used to be your security guard, who said that when you were dating J-Lo, Will Smith and Jada tried to pick her up on a threesome and you were gonna beat up Will Smith. Is that true? <laughs> Yo, this show has gotten crazier since the last time I went through the no, it's I all about not, love, though. That's no, not true. You you really heard that? No. What? Yeah, yeah, I watched it uh, on, on the internet. You're yeah. telling me I can't believe everything I read? What? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Jim, Jimmy, I thought we was friends. Where did this, where did this go? So that's why Diddy and Ellen hit it off. But let's dive into how they treat their employees, because they've both been accused of mistreating their staff. You know, Diddy's been dealing with some pretty serious allegations and lawsuits from folks who used to work for him. But these accusations didn't just pop up with Cassie. Back in 2017, Diddy faced a lawsuit from his former chef, Cindy Rueda. She accused him of sexual harassment and retaliation. Rueda claimed she began working for Diddy in 2015, putting in long hours from 9 a.m. to midnight or even later, without getting paid for overtime. Rueda said Diddy often wanted her to serve food right after he and his pals had been intimate. She also said Diddy would make her serve meals to him. The lawsuit also claimed that once, one of Diddy's buddies strutted into the kitchen butt naked, wanting her to check out his goods. Rueda kept bringing up her work problems to Diddy's estate director, Stacy Friend. But instead of taking her concerns seriously, they set her up to get accused of stealing, which led to her getting fired in the end. As per Ellen's ex-housekeeper who spilled the beans to the Daily Mail, Ellen ran her home like it was some sort of military operation, always barking orders, nitpicking over small mistakes, and seeming to enjoy giving folks the boot. Plus, word has it she had this habit of jotting down passive-aggressive notes about every little thing she thought her employees were getting wrong. She'd flip out over stuff like serving food in the wrong bowl, misplacing the salt shaker, or not frothing her latte just right. But hold on to your hat because it gets weirder. One ex-employee spilled the beans, saying Ellen was so crazy about details that she'd set up what they called traps before heading off to work. Yeah, she'd sneakily tuck matches behind cupboard doors to check if the cleaners were really getting into every corner of her mansion. And it didn't end there. Handymen, security guards, you name it, they all dreaded going to Ellen's place because they knew she'd rip apart their work with her nitpicking. It got to the point where one of the top security companies in Hollywood dumped her. And you won't believe the ridiculous reason why. Ellen supposedly couldn't handle the way their security guards were doing their job. She'd also talk down to the workers and sometimes even scream at them. She treated you like you were dirt, one ex-worker said, also mentioning that Ellen's vibe was always, I'm gonna make your life miserable and you're just gonna take it cause you're getting paid. Even Ellen's dogs weren't fans of her. The former staffer said the dogs adored Ellen's instead. The dogs would be jumping with joy when Ellen came home, but they hardly budged when Ellen showed up. The worker flat out called Ellen the worst person they'd ever met and believed she got a kick out of firing folks. In July 2020, BuzzFeed News dropped a bomb with a report from 10 unnamed female employees, confirming that the Ellen show had been a toxic place to work all along. Apparently, staff got the boot for taking sick leave or even just needing time off for family funerals. One ex-employee spilled the beans, saying Ellen didn't just ignore the mistreatment, racism, and harassment of staff, but actually encouraged it. Even the former Ellen Show DJ and actor Tony Okungboa spoke up about the mess, saying on Instagram that he definitely felt the toxicity of the place. What's wild is that almost none of Ellen's celeb pals said a word about these claims. And now, we're seeing the same thing play out with Diddy. Remember all those celebs cozying up to Diddy, showing off their friendship and practically begging for invites to his parties? And here's the kicker. 
Isn't it ironic how both Ellen and Diddy are always preaching about kindness and love? I say be kind to one another. I don't mean only the people that think the same way that you do. I mean be kind to everyone. While well, Diddy's been pushing this whole love thing for a minute now. We live in a toxic world right. and it's love versus hate. That's what's going on right now. Yeah. And I choose love, that's my new name, and love wins. Love wins, let's hey. go love. Here's another thing Diddy and Ellen supposedly share. They're romantic partners. We've heard about those awful allegations from Cassie and her lawsuit accusing Diddy of some pretty messed up stuff. Lawsuit headlines with a trigger warning for containing graphic sexual assault information, describing in detail sex trafficking allegations in which Combs would force Cassie to take drugs, wear masks, and perform sex acts on other men so he could watch. Cassie says Combs raped her when she tried to leave him. She says he beat her then made her stay in hotels or his home until the bruises healed and his security would make sure she did what Combs wanted or else. But here's the thing, Cassie wasn't the first, and insiders say Diddy treated all his girlfriends the same way. Misha was drop dead gorgeous. She, she thought Puff was messing around, I guess like she started talking to the dude from EPMD, he came to see her, and Puff beat up till she got up under the, beat up literally till she tried to run up under the car. Wow, wow. He was reckless with his hands, you know that. The only person that really put their hands on women really is people who have, men who have feminine traits. So, you know, it really takes a coward to put his hands on a woman. So, you know, a man is so strong enough, we can just walk away. You don't, you, you can, you can do, there's so many different things that you can do other than get upset, put your hands on a woman. But that comes from a man who's not quite a, a grown man. It's still a boy, like a bad boy. Speaking of Kim Porter, because you knew Kim Porter, is it true that Diddy broke her nose? Bust her nose, man. You know, but it, it was all, you know, uh, it, insecurities. Anytime a man would go out his way to wiretap someone's phone or, or put taps in their homes just to monitor their conversation, that's a sign of insanity. Now, when it comes to Ellen, there haven't been any accusations of her getting physical with her partners. According to the source, Portia has witnessed Ellen's darkest moments and knows firsthand how controlling and cold Ellen can be to people, including herself. The source also mentioned that Ellen's become even more possessive lately because she's afraid Portia might spill the beans to the media about Ellen's not-so-nice side. You know what they say, birds of a feather flock together, right? So, it's not shocking that Ellen and Diddy clicked, they seem to have a lot in common personality-wise, and Diddy's been on The Ellen Show a bunch over the years. 17 times to be exact. And with all the attention on Ellen and Diddy's friendship, some pretty interesting clips from their visits are popping up online. Like this one, where Ellen asks Diddy who he'd want to be stuck in an elevator with, and he just blurts out Kevin Hart without any explanation. Someone you would want to be stuck in an elevator with. Kevin Hart. Okay. <laughs> Or how about that one time when Diddy and French Montana joined Ellen for a game of kinky or drinky, and things got a little weird. And who talk baby talk in bed? <laughs> really? Oh, this is not how you play the game? <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's a turn on, somebody talking baby talk to you. No, 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 it's just talking. No, talking dirty. No, no, baby talk. Talking, baby talk is in the category yeah, yeah. talking dirty. Is it, is it a baby hey, yo, or let me, like baby? To, let me explain something to you. There's no rules in talking dirty. There's no rules in talking dirty. I don't want to be with a baby. That's not my thing. I want her to talk baby talk. Plus, there are tons of clips out there where Ellen and Diddy chat about hitting up each other's parties. Early for my party? Yes, I am. No. No. <laughs> You know I have to arrive fashionably late. All right, not too late though. Not too late? Not too late, please. What time would you like me to end? Um, I'll tell you later, okay. but oh, not okay. too late. Cause, cause you know, once you get there, the party really starts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got you, I promise you, I'm not gonna let you down on this big one. All right, For good, real. good. Then, in another viral moment from the show, Diddy calls out Ellen. So tell me about your birthday party, am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up. To no, well, here. there. Is it on the East Coast? Yes. Well, that's why. Why don't yeah. you have one here on the West Coast? Because I work all the time. Okay, well, maybe I have one at your house. Where's the. <laughs> <laughs> now, what time would your party start, let's say? Like 9.30. Really? That early? Yeah. I could make that. Yeah. <laughs>
But I think I think of you of, of starting a party at like midnight. Like what time will it go that, till? That's a different type of party though. That's a different type of party though. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it, no, it, it'll go from like 9.30 to like maybe three o'clock, two, three o'clock. And then, you know, we have the top two floors of the hotel. Mm-hmm. We'll... And then it will carry on there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Then it... mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I mean um, the, the after party. Mm-hmm. No, I know about them. Um... <laughs> Now, there are rumors floating around that Ellen did actually show up at those after-after parties. In fact, the paparazzi recently caught Ellen and asked her about all the buzz surrounding Diddy. You could see Ellen get a little jittery at the mention of Diddy's name. Ellen, were you surprised by the allegations about P. Diddy? Did that surprise you about P. Diddy? He's been on your show many times. Have you been? She looks worried and nervous, one fan commented. Another chimed in. Did you see the genuine fear in her rush to her car? But what's your opinion on this? What do you think about folks claiming Ellen and Diddy have a bunch in common? And do you believe Ellen actually showed up at those rumored wild parties? Drop your thoughts in the comments, smash the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for the next video.